Hello and welcome to WMLT News. I'm Bailey Gillespie. And I'm Jared Klein. The Pipe Stem and surrounding communities enjoyed the 8th Annual Culture Fest this past weekend. Chris Allen has more. People across the nation came to West Virginia to Culture Fest for the weekend, which started September 8th and went till September 11th to celebrate its 8th season of diversity and live music. The music is the main attraction for Culture Fest, but Lori McKinney, Culture Fest founder and musician, says it is much more than just music and is a real learning experience. Other people, when I do Culture Fest, I communicate with so many different types of people. I learn so much just from having conversations with people from various cultures and even the people around the area who don't participate in this festival, they're reading about it and they're hearing about it on the news. Words like respect for diversity and tolerance and they're hearing these buzzwords and I know it affects them. Even if they choose, they're not ready to come out and actually experience it themselves. Somehow it's affecting the community. There is also good food to be found at Culture Fest, from do-it-yourself blending, jewelry, hula hoops, barbecue, and even a massage tent. Who's a vendor at Culture Fest who offers maybe a, a different type of vending? Let's just get to know her a little bit and her business. Uh, Amy, what is it that you do at Culture Fest? I'm giving massage this weekend and um, meeting a lot of interesting people, enjoying some wonderful music and good food. It's gone well. We're, uh, we're enjoying ourselves. Um, we have set up some barters with some of the other vendors as well, and, um, and that's been really nice. So it's a good weekend. This is probably the last time that you can be out in um, nice warm weather. It's about 73 degrees right now. And what is a music festival without some djembe drumming? Occasionally you have like a couple demons or whatever that are walking around. Culture Fest is a great experience in the warm mountain region where music is always felt and the mood is always mellow. This is Chris Allen at Culture Fest. After reviewing 80 possible locations for the Summit Bichelle Reserve, the Boy Scouts of America choose the mountains of West Virginia. More specifically, Farden Ground Mountain, which overlooks the town of Mount Hope. The BSA announced that the summit would be a year-round adventure camp for whitewater rafting, mountain climbing, and water and winter camping. The camp will, camp will also become the permanent home for the National Scout Jamboree. During the time of the Jamboree, this camp will become West Virginia's second largest city, expecting about 40,000 scouts and 8,000 to 9,000 volunteers. The summit is already having an impact on the surrounding areas that are expecting to see some growth from the incoming campers and their families. First responders and survivors of one of the nation's deadliest tornadoes gathered together Sunday, September 11th to add the last stitches into the national 9-11 flag. The flag is made up of fragments of U.S. flags that have been salvaged from the tornado that hit May 22nd. These fragments have been combined with the flag that flew above the Twin Towers into a restored version that will now be part of the National 9-11 Memorial Museum. This project started four years ago and has included pieces from flags that have been collected from other national tragedies, including the flag that Abraham Lincoln rested on after being shot. Children, soldiers, and police officers from all 50 states have taken part in stitching this memorial flag together. Now with Concord Sports, here's Brett, Brett Dodrell. Thanks, guys. Concord University's 2011 football campaign is off to a rough start, having dropped their first two games of the season, the most recent of which coming at the hands of Elon University out of the Southland Conference. The Phoenix were able to pile up 42 points and exactly 400 yards of offense on the Lions. Running back Brian Kennedy was able to get 139 yards rushing, but the quarterbacks never got it together, going 12 for 31 and 112 total yards. Their next game is this Saturday as they travel to the University of Charleston. Concord soccer teams have also gotten off to a rough start. Both men's and women's teams traveled to Seton Hill over the weekend, but both fell short, dropping both of their records to 0-3. This past spring, Concord's baseball team did something that would be considered historic. They won eight of their final 11 games to qualify for the Weebiak tournament on the very last day of the regular season. Then, they won four straight games in the tournament to bring home the Weebiak Conference Baseball Championship, only the third in Concord's history. For this accomplishment, Concord's head baseball coach, Andrew Wright, is the subject of a new profile on Baseball Factory's website. In the story, Wright talks about his coaching role models, his recruiting approach, last year's conference run, and more. Check out 
check this story out at baseballfactory.com. For sports, I'm Brett Dodrell. Back to you guys at the desk. The recent weather that has hit the East Coast has caused flooding and damage to the various states along the coast. President Barack Obama signed an emergency declaration which covered 42 counties in, in Pennsylvania and 15 counties in New York. The remnants of Tropical Storm Lee is what put the areas into major need of help. This tropical storm has brought historical levels of flooding that has caused thousands to evacuate their homes as Lee moves across the Northeast. In Pennsylvania, around 70,000 were told to leave their homes as the water rose above flood stage. These high waters have caused damage as well as death in affected areas. The declarations have helped say, speed up the relief efforts as well as open up more federal funding for the calls in order to quickly repair the damage. Stay tuned, we'll return with more WMLT news in just a moment. Welcome back to WMLT News. Americans may still be feeling the impact of the economic recession. According to a new census report released Tuesday, the nation's poverty rate rose to the highest point since 1993. The rate jumped nearly an entire percent from 14.3 in 2009 to 15.1 in 2010. With this increase, it is estimated that 46.2 million people are now considered in poverty. The government defines poverty as annual income of less than $11,000 for an individual and less than $22,000 for a family of four. This phenomenon is not only affecting the adults, children are feeling the impact as well. The poverty rate for children under 18 rose to 22%. This means that more than one in five American children are living in poverty. Here now with this week's Concord Minute is Trisha St. Clair. Preparation for homecoming is underway this week at Concord University. This year's homecoming theme is comic books. Billboards created by the campus fraternities and sororities are to be set up on campus Monday, September 19th. The billboards will display the candidates for this year's royal court. Candidates for homecoming will be listed on Concord's website. In celebration of homecoming, festivities have been planned week long for alumni, students, faculty, staff, and friends of the university. A parade will be held this Thursday, September 22nd at 6 p.m. on Vermilion Street here in Athens. Any area business clubs or organizations that would like an entry should call Katie Whitaker Hatfield at 304-384-6286 or email her at cuevents at concord.edu. After the parade, there will be a bonfire in the valley. There will be a lip sync contest Friday, September 23rd at 8 p.m. in the main gym of the Carter Center. Just one of the many contests that are going on homecoming week. Saturday, the big game kicks off at 2 p.m. where the Mountain Lions face off against the West Virginia State University Yellow Jackets. And be sure not to miss halftime when we see who gets crowned for Royal Court. Will it be Aquaman and Cyclone or Superman and Wonder Woman? Be there to find out. Back to you at the desk. As the special election campaign for West Virginia governor heats up, the most recent public policy poll shows Republican Bill Maloney closing in on acting Governor Earl Ray Tomlin. In May, the same poll showed that Tomlin with a 15% lead. Now Maloney trails behind Tomlin by only a 6% margin. There has been negative national sentiment towards career politicians, and Bill Maloney is exploiting that fact with Earl Ray Tomlin, which can attribute to his recent rise in popularity. No matter who you support, it will continue to be a heated yet interesting campaign. Early voting starts on September 21st, and general election day is October 4th. 
Trap Hill Middle School steps confidently into the 21st century this Wednesday. For the first time, students of all grade levels in the school were using personal laptops for in-class and eventually out-of-class learning. The one-on-one -on -one computing initiative has been a goal for the West Virginia Department of Education for quite some time, and Trap Hill faculty are excited to see parents getting behind the program as well, with a record-breaking number attending the annual open house. The school was chosen based on Principal Jerry Bogus' long history of integrating technology into the school curriculum. The success of the pilot school project will determine if it is feasible to implement in other Raleigh County schools as well. Before receiving the computers, the children were required to learn about responsibility and care of the laptops, including social networking, cyberbullying, and all-around internet safety. Here now with this week's Ticket or Leave It is Nate Altair. If you're a fan of horror movies that sacrifice plot for entertainment, then Fright Night will be just the movie for you. It starts off in a small housing development in Nevada with Charlie, a young high schooler who has worked his way from geek to cool and has left his old life behind him, and just as he is finally getting the girl of his dreams, a vampire moves next door, played by Colin Farrell. And utter chaos is unleashed. His house is burnt down, he seeks help from a vampire fanatic, his own best friend tries to kill him, and he has a final showdown with an entire nest of vampires, all in 3D. So go check out Fright Night and find out whether Charlie saves the day and gets the girl, or ends up as a bloodsucker. One Day, starring Anne Hathaway as Emma and Jim Sturgis as Dexter, is a new release movie based off the best-selling novel. The two meet the day of their graduation and soon find that their lives are forever changed. The spunky Emma and the girl crazed Dexter set out on a friendship that brings them lots of laughs, but also a few tears. They set off on their own adventures only to find that their hearts are set on each other. If you are looking for a surprising romance that will keep you on your toes, then this is the film for you. That's all for this week's Ticket or Leave It. Back to the desk. I think I'm on two. A Logan County man, Loden Eugene Murphy Jr., competes in the final four of the NBC nationwide talent search, America's Got Talent. The show auditions people of all ages throughout the U.S. in categories of singers, dancers, magicians, comedians, and many others, and is an extension of the hit British television show, Britain's Got Talent. Deriving from the UK, Murphy, a 36-year-old car washer from the small town of Logan, has been praised throughout the summer-long competition by the show's judges, Nick Cannon, Shannon, Sharon Osbourne, Howie Mandel, and Piers Morgan, over his singings of Sinatra-like sound. All finalists will perform live on WVVA tonight at 9 p.m. The winner will receive the grand prize of $1 million. That's all for this week's WMLT News from Concord University. Tune in again in two weeks. Have a good day.